at Government House and we have just finished filming. It's a uh, Tuesday evening actually, but I want to tell you I woke up this week, this Monday morning, and I had, it's funny there's a car horn going right now because I'm about to tell you about a dream that I was having about cars. I was driving a car and the steering wouldn't work and the brakes wouldn't work and I woke up and I told Tim about it. I said I was driving this car and the steering wouldn't work and the brakes wouldn't work. And it was frightening. I said, what do you think that means? And he says, it means you have a great husband. Only Tim would say something like that. <laughs> and I laughed and laughed when he said that. I'm like, okay, let's not psychoanalyze the dream then. You guys can tell me what that dream means. Those dreams are so metaphorical. Anyway, so it's Tuesday now, and this morning I went back to yoga classes. My yoga classes here in Victoria started. And two things stood out to me about my yoga classes this morning. Number one was something that I feel like I'm really integrating into my life and my practice particularly right now, which is surrender. So I heard her talking about it. She's probably been saying it all along, but I finally heard her talking about it a lot today, which is to surrender. And I feel like the more I'm letting go of my body and in my practice, the more I'm able to do it in my life. And I'm just feeling better and better for it because there's less tension in my body. And so she was talking about surrender a lot. And uh, she read this really great poem by Naomi Shihab Nye. And I'm going to look it up for you and I'm going to read it to you when I get home because it was really good. The other thing was that I was, that really stood out to me was how great it is to practice at home. Because oh my God, that room was crammed. And I think, man, you guys have got it good when you practice at uh, home with the videos because it just, Oh, you know, like trying to do a twist and then your arms are on top of other people's arms, your legs are on top of other people's legs, and then being all up in everybody else's energy. And like she does this thing at the beginning of class where you have to say two words about how you're feeling. Honestly, I come into that room and I feel like I, you know, I felt, I was feeling great this morning. I felt content and relaxed and very grounded. I'd done my own practice that morning. Then I come in that room and I start to feel like, anxious and I'm like I have to ask myself is this me or is this everybody else's energy so, so there's all that you get all up in everybody else's juju so I'm like two thumbs up for home practice man for practicing at home with videos like I've heard there's this girl on on uh, YouTube her she does these videos you'll go with Melissa you should check them out pretty good so it's Tuesday night now, and we just finished filming yoga. Oh, speaking of that, we just finished filming yoga with Melissa. We're here at Government House, and I'm walking around the Rose Garden. We tried filming in the evening, so the, so the good thing that's supposed to be about the evening is the lighting. <laughs> Only the, the, the funny thing about it is then you're also like kind of racing against the clock because you can lose the light, you know? So that was, we, are, we did kind of race against the clock. So we, we did get the show in, but we weren't, it, the, the drawback was we weren't able to cut for all the airplanes and there were a lot of airplanes. And that, um, the other good thing was we started at five, which meant all the people that do all the grounds work here had gone home. So there was no, we didn't have to cut for any, uh, any of the leaf blowers and all that stuff. So that was good. That was very good. So. That's been my week so far. We are planning on taking some time this week to go out and do some hikes and stuff because we have been just busy filming and stuff so much. But we're, we're feeling like we caught up a bit, knock on wood. So that is the plan this week. Trini has a PA day on Friday and uh, I, I really think we're gonna have some time to get away and get out into the forest and do some hiking this week. So we are quite excited about that having a little bit of more space on our plate again. Okay, so I will see you later when I'm gonna read you that Naomi Shihab Nye poem.
morning. It is Wednesday morning and we've come out to do our farm run to get some vegetables and fruit for our week and we've come across this gorgeous pumpkin patch and all the signs of autumn. The leaves are changing and the colors are just bursting forth and it's just beautiful so I thought we would stop and show you the beautiful colors of autumn. So one of the things that Tim and I, or mostly Tim is always doing, is scoping out new locations for us to film yoga with Melissa. And as we came out of uh, getting our vegetables this week, he wanted to scoot up a little bit further in Central Saanich and look um, f down by the water here. And we found this public dock and this looks like it's going to be a great place for filming some future episodes of Yoga with Melissa on days where there's no wind like today. <laughs> So this would be a great day for filming here. So uh, plan to see some future episodes of Yoga with Melissa here. Hello, it is Thursday morning and Tim and I are out for a Thursday daytime date. And we have headed out to Port Renfrew. We are on our way through Shirley, on our way to Botanical Beach. And this is whenever we come through Port Renfrew and go anywhere on the West Coast Trail, we always stop in at Shirley, at Shirley Delicious because they have fabulous hot drinks. They've got a fabulous, they always do fabulous barista drinks and uh, baked goods and we do a great breakfast when we camp here. It's amazing coming for breakfast and uh, it's just a really great place and they have amazing hospitality. So we've stopped in. We both got a little breakfast sandwich and we're gonna take it with us to uh, go and start a hike. And uh, I packed a little picnic lunch to have after our hike, but we just thought this would give us a little extra on the way. We made it to Port Renfrew. It always takes us longer than we think it's going to with the windy roads. But we're here and now we are continuing on to Botanical Beach. Okay, we are at the start of our hike. That's Tim ahead of me. He is packing out the drone and I am packing out all the water and snacks. <laughs> so it'll be a harder hike in for me and an easier hike uh, back for me <laughs> but Tim will have the drone still when he goes back so we've decided to take we usually go in the other way we're so this is a loop this hike and we usually go down the other way but today Tim said let's go down this way so I was like but we always do it the other way <laughs> he said but let's try it this way this time <laughs> so uh, we were trying it this way, which when I think about it, I thought, well, it's actually not a bad idea because this way uh, that we're going down right now is actually, there's a lot of climbing out at the end when you're tired. So we'll see actually what it's like climb coming out the other way. I, I think it's probably a lot of climbing out the other way as well, but we will see. It's a beautiful day here today. The sun is shining. There's no wind. So I think it's going to be a wonderful day to be here. It was quite a long drive. It's two hours to get here. And it takes a really long time. We, have, we haven't been here in quite a while. In fact, we were saying we haven't been to Port Renfrew since our wedding anniversary. We came out this way when we went to Point No Point for our wedding anniversary, which I don't think I filmed a lot of because we just wanted to really take that time for ourselves. So it's really nice to be here again and to be uh, out this way. It's a beautiful part of the island and it's nice to be having this Indian summer, this warm autumn weather to be able to explore the island. Although 
we are very lucky to have uh, fairly temperate weather year round here to be able to um, hike year round. So I will check in with you when we get down to the water because it is beautiful down there and a lot of the hike is all the way along the ocean front there and it's just incredible down there as well. So timing is everything here at Botanical Beach and I'll show you a little bit more but you can see that uh, rock cliff in front of me and the tides come right up around it which means we can't walk all the way along the beach here. We're, we're landlocked because of the tide. So we've come down to the bottom and the tide's pretty much all the way in and up at the beach. Whereas normally we'd be able to walk all along the beach where the water is in front of me right now. We uh, are just able to sit and enjoy the view here right now. So normally there'd be a huge uh, walk and hike along the beach here that we could do all the way around and loop the trail back up. But now uh, the water's come up so far that uh, <laughs> there's no walking around unless we were to swim which would be really cold <laughs> and wet so that's not happening so Tim's gonna fly the drone so he'll have a way of looking around and show you around anyway and I'll show you around uh, with my camera as well so this is the wall here that's preventing us it's really dark behind this wall but basically this is the wall that's preventing us from going any further right now you can see the tide is really coming in <laughs> oh yep there we go <laughs> so i might not even be able to get back here and this is all bull kelp here that's coming in this is an annual uh, seaweed it's really really huge it can grow up to a foot a day and right now it's all being washed up on the shore and that's going to be it for the, uh, for the year. It's uh, coming to the end of its season. The uh, bulbs here at the end, this is apparently there's enough carbon dioxide in here to kill a chicken. That's what we learned when we went to that seaweed course. Okay, we are climbing back up the trail, trying to get over these logs and rocks carefully past these sweet wildflowers. Which, if we were with our hiking group, everybody in the group would know what they are. And probably some of you who are watching know what they are. So you can tell me in the comments. What are you escaping from, Tim? The beach. Well, it's from tsunamis, right? <laughs> Your reality? Not today. <laughs> to have a little picnic at a really beautiful place called Fairy Lake. We've, we've driven by it quite a few times and I wanted to stop here because who wouldn't want to stop at Fairy Lake? <laughs> so it's a really beautiful place and I'm glad we finally got to stop here. It's actually a campground and it looks like it'd be a nice place to camp. The campsites are nice but the facilities don't look that great if you know what I mean. <laughs> they have outhouses that don't look as nice as the ones that I just that I came out of earlier <laughs> um, but um, the campgrounds look really nice um, so I'm not sure if we'll camp at Fairy Lake but uh, it was a nice spot to stop and have a picnic. So just down from Fairy Lake is Lizard Lake and this is a place where a lot of people like to come swimming when it's warm enough. There actually are some people here in bathing suits today which is brave I think. I mean it's warm but I think you have to really like swimming. <laughs> and we stopped here, uh, Tim's gonna fly the drone again and we're gonna have a little bit of snacks and just have another stop on our day trip.
Okay, I was a little upset just a few minutes ago because we found this great canyon for Tim to... Well, actually Tim wouldn't fly his drone there, but it wasn't a very dangerous spot where it was a one lane bridge and then the trees were really narrow through it and he wouldn't have been able to have Wi-Fi there to, to access the drone. And then, so then we were driving along a little further and somehow we saw that this was here. So this is actually a safer spot and he'll be able to fly the drone through here. We were able to stop safely and uh, he'll be able to fly the drone through here and it'll be pretty interesting for you as well. It's not, it's different than the canyon was, but it's, it's just further up along the road from it. So I think it'll be, I think it'll look interesting for you. Hey, to close out this week, I told you earlier this week I would share with you two things that stood out with, from my yoga class. And one of them was a poem. It was called The Art of Disappearing by Naomi Shihab Nye. When they say, don't I know you, say no. When they invite you to the party, remember what parties are like before answering. Someone telling you in a loud voice they once wrote a poem, greasy sausage balls on a paper plate, then reply. If they say, we should get together, say, why? It's not that you don't love them anymore. You're trying to remember something too important to forget. Trees, the monastery bell at twilight. Tell them you have a new project. It will never be finished. When someone recognizes you in a grocery store, nod briefly and become a cabbage. When someone you haven't seen in 10 years appears at the door, don't start singing him all your new songs. You'll never catch up. Walk around feeling like a leaf. Know you could tumble any second. Then decide what to do with your time. So that poem really stood out to me. And then she also read a quote from Krista Tippett's book. And uh, this was an excerpt from her book. And this really spoke to me about what's been really coming up for me in my practice about letting go of tension in my body. And so I want to end my vlog this week with this quote from Krista Tippett. When it comes to healing, when it comes to aging, we admire that 80 year old guy who runs a marathon. We want to see proof that mind can overcome matter because the body is going to be what ends up shutting down. And believe me, I didn't get this right away. But you need all kinds of strength. You need to be also to be able to, and it's un, an unused, an overused word, surrender. Being more present, surrendering into the world, feeling more. I don't mean intellectually. I mean literally having your body as if you're getting hugged like my son. But your heart feels vulnerable when you let yourself be in the world like that. That's why we avoid it. Dominance of our bodies is what human beings have done for thousands of years, whether over nature or over each other. That's one thing we want in our tool belt, to use will when you need to have it. But we are just on the beginning of realizing that there are many other ways to integrate with body. And in fact, I believe our human survival over time is going to depend on getting much more subtly aware of our bodies. So thank you for watching this week. Thanks for being with me. And I invite you into this beautiful journey of becoming more subtly aware of our bodies and surrendering to the wisdom of our bodies. Namaste.